All of a sudden, the ground opened up unexpectedly in front of me. There was a trench there. Nobody was in it. It was deserted. I had to jump down into it, but first I wanted to drop my machine gun ammunition, which seemed like it was cutting right down to the bone on my left shoulder. It didn't take but a second to ease the strap off my shoulder, but it was just one second too long. A one-pound shell came along with my number on it. It hit the machine gun I had on my right shoulder and exploded. It knocked me for a double loop, lifted me clean off the ground, and I didn't know what was happening until I came down again, and I didn't know quite what it was all about even then. I landed in a funny sort of way with my feet off the ground. My right arm had somehow gotten wedged between the wall of the trench and the lattice work, and there I hung. Shot and hung, all at once? Not so good. I tried to jerk my arm loose. I was kind of rattled, but I still had enough of my wits to know that I was in a beastly mess, and that I would better get out of it damn quick. The wall of the trench had caved in with me, and a rock had caught my arm and pinned it. I tried every way to get it loose. There wasn't any way in God's world I could budge that rock. Then I began to notice that arm in behind the lattice. It had felt sort of numb. Now I woke up to the fact that pieces of the shell had cut it up. The fingers were cut clean off the hand, dangling down, hanging to the thumb by just a little strip of skin. A gash run down the wrist and split the thumb in two. And just above the wrist, the arm bones were cut through. Not much but a little skin held the arm together there. Another cut split the forearm in two parts, up as far as I could see. But it didn't hurt any. There wasn't any feeling in it. But it made me feel sort of queer to look at it. I mean, when I thought of it and remembered it was my own arm. The way blood was pouring out of it, I had to do something quickly or I'd be a goner in jig time. Well, I got a footing in the dirt against the side of the trench and pulled with every ounce of strength I had. But even with that leverage, I couldn't get loose. I tugged three or four times, hard as I could. Then I stopped to think what to do next. Suddenly, I heard voices. I looked over the corner of the trench and saw eight Germans coming my way on a dog trot. The trench I was in was a communication trench. The main trench joined it at an angle, about five yards from where I was hanging. I could see the tops of eight helmets coming bobbing along the main trench. In one way, I was in an ideal position. Jogging along as they were, they couldn't very well see me before they rounded the corner of the trench into my part of it. I took out my gun with my left hand and waited for them. It seemed like it took them an awful long time to get there. The pressure of the rock on my arm seemed to help stop the blood, but it was trickling and dripping down the lattice the whole time. Finally, they drew into sight, still on the run, and I let them have it. Catching them at a disadvantage that way, I piled up four before they even knew where the fire was coming from. The other four who were left reached for the sky and began to yell, Comrade! They were armed with rifles and they didn't have any grenades, so I yelled at them to throw down their guns and then motioned to them to come near. They did. One was a big, tall hombre, six foot two at least, with an iron cross on his tunic. Another was a youngster, maybe 20, and the other two were 30 or older. And one wore glasses sort of like an owl. All their uniforms were spick and span and they looked brushed and combed and sort of out of place. They stared at me goggle-eyed. I had to straddle one leg across to the other side of the trench to ease off the strain a little and I could see them thinking what fools they were to give in to any guy who was hung. I motioned them with the gun to come up and help me get my arm out. The rock wouldn't budge. They strained and heaved, but it was no use. They couldn't move it with their bare hands, and I wouldn't let them get hold of any timber laying around for fear they'd crown me. I was losing blood. Too much. I couldn't go on. There was only one thing to do, and I did it. I made the four prisoners back off a little ways and stand where I could see them. I laid the automatic in a handy place. Then I pulled my bolo knife and got a good grip on it with my left hand, settled my right elbow solid on the parapet and swung the bolo down on it with a quick, clean blow. I landed down on my feet with the automatic. A sort of haze came over me, but just for a second. I had them bozos covered all right, and they were staring as though they'd seen a ghost. With my left hand, I whipped off my belt, made a loop out of it, and got it over the stump of my arm. Then, with a piece of stick put in through the buckle, I twisted it until the blood didn't do more than trickle. The boys had seen something of what happened. They'd seen me make the run with my machine gun and saw the shell plunk me, 
After that, they didn't see any more of me, and they gave up. They figured I was a goner. Then suddenly I come popping up with four hiney prisoners. They yelled their heads off. Thank you.